Even our antioxidants need antioxidants. Today I want to talk in some detail about glutathione and the direct correlation with glutathione and infections with viruses and with bacteria in the body. Now you've seen my videos on glutathione before, but I'm going to recap exactly what glutathione is. You see, it's known as the mother of all antioxidants. Why? Because it exists in virtually every single cell within our body, an extremely unique thing. And it's made up of three very simple amino acids. We've got cysteine, we've got glycine, and we've got glutamate. Those three aminos together create this wonderful glutathione that has such a powerful detoxing impact on the body that we practically couldn't live without it. In fact, our immune systems would suffer tremendously without glutathione. In this video, I'm going to talk about the correlation between the immune system and glutathione and how there are now studies that are showing a correlation between decreased glutathione levels and a suppressed immune system. So let me explain a little bit about the immune system so that this all makes sense. So a healthy immune system differentiates between good things and bad things. Basically, you have cells that travel around that are able to identify something as natural or an invader. You see, our body has these things that are called T cells. What these T cells do is they float around through the bloodstream and essentially put labels on different organisms. They'll either put a label on something that says natural, this is existing, this is okay to be here, or they will put a label on it that says invader, and that will trigger the immune system to attack it. So very, very important when it comes down to our body's alert system and knowing what's going on. So the next step in the equation is white blood cells. Okay, we've got phagocytes and we've got macrophages. What these white blood cells do is they actually attack the invader. They actually consume it or eat it and dispose of it. But here's the caveat. We need glutathione to create those white blood cells. Without glutathione, those white blood cells can't really materialize, which means we never have the ability to actually attack what the T cells put a label on. So right then and there, we have a direct correlation with the effectiveness of glutathione and our body's ability to fight off disease, fight off illness, and bona fide just recover from a workout. In essence, glutathione is basically food for immune cells. And it does this because they exist in the intestinal mucosa. Basically what that means is that that glutathione is very active in the intestinal lining. It's very active in that gut mucosa. That's also where we have a lot of our immune system. So you can kind of start doing the math there and seeing that if we have glutathione levels in our gut mucosa, then we have high levels of glutathione affecting our immune system, which can make it so that we're creating more of those phagocytes, creating more of those macrophages, and supporting that T cell function so we have a healthy immune system, healthy recovery, and ultimately have more energy. But this wouldn't be a typical Tom Stolauer video if I didn't reference a case study or two. So this first one that I wanna reference is very interesting and it's in regards to viruses. So listen carefully because it's gonna start making a lot more sense. What this first study found was that mouse models that were suffering from the flu, from the influenza virus, were seeing quite a bit of inflammation in their pulmonary area. They were also seeing an increase in what is called reactive oxygen species, ROS. That's basically a fancy way of saying high levels of free radicals in the pulmonary area. Well, in conjunction with that, there were decreased levels of glutathione and increased levels of oxidized glutathione. Let me break it down for you really simple here. What that means is there were a lot of free radicals as a result of the flu. Then we noticed that the glutathione levels were depleted. Then we noticed that the glutathione was oxidized, meaning it was used up. So direct correlation, increase in influenza, depletion of glutathione because it spent its energy attacking the influenza or actually supporting the recovery. So pretty strong correlation there. Now the next study I wanna talk about is in relation to bacteria, particularly tuberculosis. In case you didn't know, tuberculosis is kind of tricky. It hides in what's called the phagosome. The phagosome is like a vacuole inside the cell. Think of it sort of like the belly of a cell. It's very, very difficult for T cells to identify tuberculosis properly because they're kind of buried in the cell. So when we come across something that's able to identify or help with tuberculosis, it's a pretty big deal. Well, it's been found that the bacteria, particularly tuberculosis, can increase nitric oxide levels. Now, nitric oxide levels may be good if you're in the gym and you're looking for blood flow, but increased nitric oxide isn't necessarily good because downstream, it can trigger some inflammation. Well, in this study, it seemed as though glutathione neutralized some of the nitric oxide, thereby potentially reducing the inflammation later on down the line. 
which means that the body can heal itself much better, which means that the immune system can do its job much better, which means that the lymphocytes, the phagocytes, the macrophages can start doing their job and healing the body. Now, I know this was a lot of science. I know there was a lot of stuff, but I hope I broke it down for you in a way that you understand. And if there's any consolation to why you spend a few minutes watching this video, just know that if you boost your immune system, it makes everything easier. It makes your workouts easier. It makes your mood better. It makes it easier to adhere to a diet and it puts you in a better position to take control of your health and block out the noise from the rest of the internet and the rest of the world and focus on you. As always, keep it locked in here on my videos. And if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put them below. I'll see you in the next video.